Okay. So we had a general uh, block like this. Basically, you have a um, okay, you have this. Okay. Yeah, and we derive that uh, if we wanted to obtain, okay, basically uh, the open loop pulse trans function for this simple module here. That's equivalent to say you trying to discretize this portion in here, right? <coughs> Basically, this is called you're discretizing this G of S with an equivalent zero order hold and an impulse sampler preceding it, right? Yeah, that's basically this. And what's G of Z here then? Uh, the the G of Z is one minus Z to the power of negative one Z transform g of s over s. Okay? Yeah. So this is basically, I need you to actually memorize this thing here. This is sort of like a um, very important um, results that you, you're going to use, right? Whenever see people saying, hey, what's the uh, zero order hold the equivalent of this plan here? What is it? It's this guy here, right? It's this. Okay. So now, If you use a math lab trying to, uh, uh, if you use a math lab trying to get these results to here, um, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just quickly just just kind of showing it here. Okay, so let's say now the plant is this. This is 3s. Okay, s squared plus 3s plus 2. Right, 3s is this. So here's what I could do. I'll just numerator. Okay. Numerator, uh, numerator the gs okay equal to what to what was it three right so three zero okay and the denominator is going to be one three two okay right so that's basically the numerator denominator of the plant right yeah okay so then there are two ways, right? I think that you've already mentioned there are two ways to obtain uh, to obtain this g of z in here, okay? G of z. And one one simple one simple way is just just uh, uh, g z right equal to t f numerator uh, numerator g s denominator g s, and then what z o h, right? And, and plug in the uh, sampling time. So uh, let's put one, 0 0.1 here. Okay. Oh, that's, yeah, of course. What did I remember? Oh, D, D, yeah. Denominator. Why? <laughs> okay. Yeah. <coughs> what? Oh, that's yeah, yeah, what's going on. See, the, no, no. Uh, 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 just a second, just a second. Uh, try, uh, try, okay. Yeah, so, so T, TF first, right? Yeah, let's. Yeah, so, okay. Yeah, you create the trans function first, right? Yeah. And then, well, I shouldn't call it GZ anymore. Okay, and then G Z equal to C to D. Okay, uh, G Z right. Okay, and here you use the order hold. Okay, then plugging a certain sampling time. Yes. But yes, yes, of course. You have to put your sampling time first. Oh, first sampling time first. Oh, well, look at that. <laughs> Good point. There. Okay. Yep. It's a bad habit. Yeah. Right. So that's basically what you get for the uh, Z transform, the GZ there. Right. Okay. But I want you to try this. Okay. I want you to try this. Uh, let's let's see if I don't use zero order hold here. Let's see if I don't use zero order hold. If I use IMP here. Okay. 
if I use IMP here, I don't get the same thing, right? I don't get the same thing. Okay. So, what is if I use IMP? What's the result at here? What is the what is the, what is the result? Uh, what does the result at here correspond to? If I use a IMP here for the GS. So you come back here. If I use IMP, so when you when you use the zero order hold, that zero H in the command C2D, you get this, right? You get this. But if I use the IMP that the the uh, the option there, what did I get? The the result that you get is actually what? It's this. Okay? It's this. <coughs> Is that clear? Okay. So, yeah, yeah, Chris. Yeah. yeah. So, the other way of uh, deriving, basically, the other way of deriving this one using MATLAB. So, what you do, you, what you what you can also do is, uh, you can also create a zero order hole. You know, zero order hole is this guy here, right? So you can create this one in MATLAB using the symbolic things, you know, basically with S, uh, S term there. And then you multiply basically this, G, uh, this GS multiply with this zero order whole thing here, okay? Then when you use the Z transform on this one here, then you have to use the IMP at it here. Can you see the difference, right? So one way is you don't have to consider this zero. Just create this trans function, and you, when you use a C2D, when you use the C2D, you just use zero order hold, and the MATLAB will basically take care of that. Yeah. How do you exponential? Yeah. Um, that you have to basically use a symbolic the same as like this. Yeah. And then let's say zero order hold equal to that. Uh, y minus exp. Uh, uh, sorry, actually not same as it's a it's a t it's s equal to I think it's t f s like this. Yeah. Oh, just use a exp. Let, let me try it. Okay. Huh? Y minus exp negative negative what s right by uh, 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 sampling time point one did I use point one right divided by divided by s huh? what's going on here You don't like the EXP? No, I didn't transfer from the transfer. Oh, yeah. Came back with the service. Is that right? Uh, okay, let, let me double check this thing here, okay? Let me double check. I think I was pretty sure I tried this before. Mm -hmm. Hmm? It's this. It doesn't matter. Oh, yeah. So this is okay. <coughs> oh, it's that divided by S. It doesn't like, mm -hmm. right? So it's this divided, hmm? oh minus, why minus this? Uh, good point here, why did I do this? I remember I did this once. Okay, okay let, let, me, let me drop my mind after the class. I'm pretty sure I did this. <coughs> okay, let me drop my mind after this one here. Let's, let's, let me confirm, but the idea is Basically, you see my my idea here is when you have a zero order hold, right? You can, this is one way of doing it. 
The other way is if you consider zero order hold as a standalone block, S block here, you can multiply it together first and then when you use C2D and you're going to use this IMP here. Okay? So basically when you see, mathematically when you see a block like a Z of this guy here, right? The default is IMP basically. Okay? Yeah. The table that you that you have, the Z transform, it's also based on this impulse input. Basically there is a impulse sequence to the to the system input. Okay. So that's a subtle difference there. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so um, let me let's let's start a new topic now. And uh, in previous lecture we derived a uh, state space equation. Okay. And uh, we showed you I showed hang on this there was a diagram I think I showed you So in this diagram here, there are two branches, right? So one way to obtain the discrete states model is this branch. There's through the Z-trans function, and the other branch is here. Okay. So based on the continuous ODE, you first obtain is the continuous state space model, and then discretize the state space continuous state space model using a zero order hold equivalent here to obtain this discrete state model. So this is what we're going to do today here, okay? Let's take a look at how do we uh, go through this branch at here. Okay, so since we are discretizing a continuous state model, so let's write down uh, the continuous state, uh, state space model first. Uh, I'll show you through an example of uh, how to obtain this continuous through uh, state space model later. Okay? So continuous system. I'll use a uh, uh, different symbols as we used in the previous lecture. But uh, okay. So this is a the continuous state space model for a system, right? For a system here. Uh, F, G are system matrices, right? X is the state variables of the continuous system. They are vectors, okay? Yeah. And what we, we what we want is we want to discretize this one into okay, a discrete model here. Okay, the main the, the main change is actually C and the D is not going to change. It only changes F and the G here. Uh, their system matrices will be changed because of the discretization. Okay, yeah. So in other words, um, the state variable, the physical meaning of the state variable in the continuous system here will be uh, retained. Uh, after the discretization. For example, if x1, the state variable x1 represents a position, x2 represents a velocity, then after the discretization, the x1, x2 here, right, they still represent the same uh, meaning there. Okay. Yeah, so this is our objective. Okay. So now, first of all, what we need to do is we need to obtain what is the solution of this one here. Okay, so let's obtain the solution of this. Okay. All right. Now, this this one here. If you look, take a take a close look, take a close look uh, look at it here. Well, we have a vector sign in here, right? We have vector signs in here. F and a G. We know they are matrices. But if I get rid of the vector sign, let's see. If I get rid of vector sign here, uh, consider Basically, x is just a scalar quantity. Then, what was that? So let's see if I if I'm dealing with not vec no vector sign here. If I'm dealing with a situation like this, so I'm gonna move this term over here, and the other side is this. Okay, if I get rid of vector sign just temporarily. So what is this guy here? What order of the system is this? 
second order? First, first, first order. So this is a first order. What kind of differential equation is this? <laughs> is, is it nonlinear or is it linear? Let's say f g are constant here. It's a linear, right? It's a linear ordinary differential equation. Basically, and it's first order. That makes sense, right? So because f and g here are constant, why is f and g complicated? We're, de we're dealing with LTI system, basically linear time variant system. So the sort of matrices f and g here, they're all going to be constant, not time variant here, right? Yeah. <coughs> so this is basically a first order one. Now, if you remember, how, did, how, how do we learn solving first order differential equation? There is a technique, plus times 246. There's a technique solving first order differential is to use what? Integrating factor methods. Right? Integrative factor. So integrative factor methods basically what you do is you multiply each side okay, with an integrating factor. That make sense? Right? So then uh, the idea is you want it to rewrite the left side into sigma x basically prime here, product rule. Okay? Product rule. So then that equal to the other side like this. Okay? So the sigma here is called integrating factor. Okay. And we need to find a suitable sigma such that uh, you can rewrite the left side into this format here, right? Yeah. So then what will be a suitable sigma then? Well, if you, re if, if you extend this one here, this is sigma prime x plus sigma x prime equal to this, right? Equal to this, okay? So what do you want? You want to rewrite this one into here, right? Into here. So if you compare these two, if you compare these two here, okay? If you compare these two, yeah, I use a dot here, but you can use a prime in here, okay? You can use a prime. So you already have a, this original one here already have a sigma x prime. See that, right? And here, sigma x prime. So if you want to make these two blocks the same thing, which means what? This, this term has to be the same as this term here. All right? Yeah. So that means sigma prime x needs to be the same as negative sigma f x of t. Okay? x of t. Okay, so then I have x, x on both sides. So you can cancel that x, which end up the sigma prime equal to negative sigma f. Right? Negative sigma f. So this is the homogeneous one. So the way to solve this one is, what do you do? You basically, this is a d sigma over dx, okay, equal, uh, we're in t, right? So dt. <coughs> d sigma over dt equal to negative sigma f. Separating variable, so d, si d sigma over sigma equal to negative f dt. So far so good? Yeah? So separating variable is a dt here, sigma here. And then we're going to integrate both sides. Right? Integrate both sides. Okay? Integrate both sides. Here you get ln sigma here. And here f is a constant. So what do we get? Right? Negative ft. Okay? So technically you, can, you should plus a constant here. So I'll skip the constant. So then, well, what's the solution for the sigma now? You take exponential both sides here. The solution is e to the power negative ft here, right? So that's the integrating factor, okay? That's the integrating factor. So I, I derived all of these things based on a uh, simple first order differential equation, okay? Now, if I come back to these vectors here, well, uh, practically, okay, we can still do the same thing. Okay, so for this for this vector form a kind of a first order differential equation, then if I move this one to the right, <coughs> to the left, I have exactly the same format as this, right? <coughs> then I can also have basically a so-called integrating factor here. Yeah, so basically it's still this guy here. Okay, so we have so-called integrating factor. So e to the power negative f of t. Okay. That's the integrating factor. So then 
What does the integrating factor do? So what do we do is we apply this integrating factor to our original okay, differential equation. Okay, yeah. so let's keep the all vectors as in, even if we deal with a single input, single output, let's keep the vector sign there. And you see this, right? Just multiply the integrating factor to the original differential equation. Okay? And uh, what's the purpose of the integrating factor? So that this left side can be written into bracket prime here. What's in the prime? What's in the bracket? Integrating factor multiplied by what? X of t, right? Vector. Okay? And equal to the other side. <coughs> okay. Yeah. So far, so good. So now we're going to apply the same inner techniques that is over here. Right? That's the first order. This is a homogeneous one now. Okay. So what do we do? So this whole side here, right? This whole side, this is prime here. Basically, it's a D this over dt, right? This whole side here is d this over dt. Yeah. So move the dt to the other side. Okay. So we have, we have a d we have this. Okay, we got this right here. Now we integrate now this time we, when we integrate, let's integrate it from t naught to t. Okay, In, integrate from t naught. So then let's consider the t naught as initial time. Okay, so t naught could be zero. Okay, yeah. So this integration, the integration of d anything, it's basically itself. Okay. So this side here, it's e negative f t x of t. Okay. Uh, where do you do? Where do you go from t naught to t, right? You go from t naught to t. And the other side, uh, we don't know what uh, uh, g is, what u is, so we can do the in integral here. So let's just leave it as it is. But um, we do know, okay, we're dealing with linear time invariant system. The g is a constant, so you can take the g outside this integral here. So there is a little confusion here because I use a t at a here already, right? So I use a t here already, but uh, my original one is t t two. So in practice, you when you do integral, uh, you want to differentiate this one. So basically, this two t here, which is actually dummy variable, so you probably you can you should change that to a different symbols here. Let's change that to tau. Okay, yeah. And was okay? Yeah, just dummy variable. Yeah. Okay, so this side, okay, plug in the limit. Okay, and we which we got t here. X of t here minus the other one. So I'll move the minus term to the right side here. Okay, move the minus term to the right side, which will become a positive. <coughs> Okay, there we go. We're pretty close now. One more step, we got the solution. Okay, we'll get a solution. Okay. So you look at this one here. We what we're gonna do next is we gotta multiply each side by positive e to the power of f t. Okay, positive e to the power of f t. So that basically will cancel out this coefficient that is here and uh, leave us with the only x of t here. But then this guy here is e negative f t minus t naught. Was that right? No, not, not negative f, positive f, right? Yeah, positive.
x of t naught. Plus <coughs> e to <coughs> gives me plus e to the power f t t naught t here tau u of tau d tau and g. Okay, so that's a solution. This is basically the solution of first order differential equation, right? Okay, and uh, the only difference is. We have a vector assignment here. Okay, so there's one more step you can you can uh, simplify this. This is e to the power of f t here, right? And this integral here is about the tau here. Okay, integral is about the tau. So we can actually move this term into this integral right here. So combine them together. Okay, because this this is a t, so it's basically can be treated as a constant with regard to this integral here, right? Yeah. So it's basically this term plus okay, moving moving, it's f okay, t minus tau u tau d tau and t. Okay. So this is actually one of the reasons we change the t to tau first, right? So we cut we have less confusion here. Good. So we got ourselves the solution of the state space equation, which is a first order, of course. Okay. Yeah. However, uh, you, you, you need to be uh, aware okay, a situation and here is this. So there is this e to the power of f t, okay, this term, this guy here. Okay. If f is a constant two or three, so that's okay, right? That's just exponential function. Okay. But now f is not a constant. F is what? F is a matrix. What size of the matrix is technically it's n by n matrix, right? N by n. So then this gives us slightly okay um, perspective here. Okay, it's different perspective regarding this one here. So if f is a matrix, okay, and this guy here, this is actually also a matrix. It's called exponential matrix. Okay, it's exponential. It's also f is a square matrix, so this is also a square matrix right here. Right? Yeah. So, what would be this e to the power of f t then? Okay. Um, so what you do is you can use this Taylor series expansion to obtain this uh, e to the power of f t, and that. Uh, Taylor series expansion, let me write down Taylor series expansion first. The e to the power of at equal to 1 plus at plus 1, 2 factorial, a squared, t squared, and 3 factorial, a cubed, t cubed, yeah, okay, that's Taylor series expansion. So if I apply the same okay, pattern here, same pattern, so this capital F is the a at here, but the capital F is the matrix, so this is not one anymore. It's gonna be a matrix. It's gonna be an identity matrix set here. Okay, it's gonna be identity matrix. So it's gonna be I here and F T okay, and plus one two factorial F square T square. Okay, cool. Okay, so that's the 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 uh, the way to obtain this e to the power F T here. Okay, um, it's it. I mean, you look at this one here, you must say is, oh, there are infinite number of terms adding them together, right? So, uh, technically speaking, hand calculation is not possible. So, you're going to have to calculate uh, an infinite number of terms. And what do you have to do? You have to calculate the, the square of a matrix, basically, two matrix multiply each other, right? Yeah. But, you, but, but however, um, Depends on the type of the matrix F here, so uh, it could be basically converting. Okay, so basically you don't really need to take okay like a uh, infinite number of term. Maybe just two or three terms uh, will actually be enough, right, to give you approximate uh, result. Right? Yeah, approximate result. Uh, if you use a math lab, there is a MATLAB command called the EXPN. Okay, EXPN. So 
you just uh, use the expm and the function f okay and the rt there and symbolically you can calculate this uh, e to the power of t here there, right yeah so in the, in the lecture notes i think I have, yeah so basically let's say you said t equal to the symbolic t at here and then um, i have this p which is basically expm okay f by t and you have to define the f first okay define the f matrix first okay. uh, the other the other the other property is uh, when you take a derivative okay of this guy here okay when you take a derivative of this guy If f is a constant, what's the derivative of this guy? It's this, right? If f is a constant. So if f is a matrix, the same results. Okay, same thing. In the next lecture, we're going to learn here is um, this e to the power f of t, it's called a transition matrix for the uh, continuous state space model here. Okay, so this guy here. This is called a transition matrix. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So once we obtain our uh, solution for the uh, continuous system now, so now we are ready to do our discretization. Okay. So what are we discretizing? Remember, huh? The objective is to discretize that to you to have a zero order whole equivalent. So basically, uh, it's the same drawing that as I showed there. That you have a zero order hold in front of the, your plant G of S. Okay, your G of S. The only difference now is uh, in the previous lecture or previous practice, you you have the trans function here, then you discretize that, right? But now this trans function is replaced with a state space model. Okay, it's with a state space model. So a continuous state space model. Okay, so we can discretize. Okay, so let's do this. Let's uh, so let's let's take t k and t k plus one. Okay. So me basically I'm gonna look at two time instant. So there are two there are two time instant. So there are basically two instant, and there are two successive. Okay. So one is k, one is k plus one. Okay. And uh, let's to make it to simply put it. The difference between the two time instant is going to be our sampling time t. Okay, yeah. So this is for any k here. Okay, for any k. All right. Let's look at our solution here. Right here, here's our solution. X of t equal to this bunch plus this guy here. So now. This the solution here is re with respect to what? With respect to the time instant t and the instant of uh, t naught, right? T naught. So let's replace the t naught with a t k. Replace the t with a t k plus one. Okay, right? So basically, um, the value of x of a t k, right? A t k plus one, and the value of x of a t k should satisfy that solution okay so satisfy the solution meaning we have e to the power f tk plus 1 minus tk okay and x of tk here plus okay the integral the original is from t naught to t so now it's from tk to tk plus 1 Okay, yeah. So nothing really changed, just sort of give the t and the t naught a slightly different meaning. Okay. Was that okay? Yeah. Okay, now let's observe this thing here, okay? And apply the the, the assumption the zero order hold 
at here. So first of all, okay, let's let's think about uh, zero order hold. What does zero order hold do? Zero hold, zero order hold basically. Okay, before we move on here, let's see if this is a plan here, and then the input at here. If this is u of t, then this is basically becomes what u of k here, right? U of k, okay. And zero order hold is what happens is it's going to hold this value as a constant within one sampling period. Is that right? Yeah. So then from tk to tk plus 1, this value, this is the input to the system. Originally, if it's a continuous one, it's a function of time, right? It's, it's a changing one here. But now because of zero hold property, so you actually, your u of uh, tk plus 1 is actually what? The same as u of uh, tk, right? So that because it's holding it, right? You're holding it through this two time instance here. Okay. And for your tau value between tk and tk plus 1. Okay. So this is not a constant anymore. Oh, no, sorry, this is not a variable anymore. It's a constant here, right? It's a constant. Okay. So then what we can do is, if it's a constant here, and I actually can just replace this one, right? Replace this one here with u of uh, tk, right? Replace this u of tk. And this is not a, not a variable, basically, when you integrate, this has nothing to do with the tau anymore, so you actually can take this term out of the integral here. Okay? Yeah. So that basically gives us a, a slightly a different expression. Okay? Uh, now, how about this term here? Right? This term. This term is tk plus 1 minus tk. What was that? Capital T, right? That's capital T here. Okay? So basically, this term is E F capital T x tk plus tk to tk plus 1 here, and ef tk plus 1 minus tau, d tau, and then g u t k. Okay, so this is the new equation at here relates the tk and tk plus 1. Okay. Okay, so we are almost done here now, actually. Now I'm going to define this term here. Okay. So this is a e to the power of ft. t here is a constant sampling time. f is also a constant matrix. So this term here, technically speaking, is a matrix. It's actually going to be what? Going to be a constant matrix. Right, it's going to be constant matrix. So let's define it as matrix A here. Okay. And this guy here, okay, this integral, right? It's integral. So you're integrating something and with a limit, so it's definitely integral. So what's coming out of this, this integral here, you're supposed to get also a constant here, but it's also a vector, right? So matrix here. Okay, yeah. So actually, the B here in, in, include the G here, okay? Include the G here. Yeah, include the G. So basically, what we have here, we have a two new matrix here. So A equal to this, and B equal to this. Okay, so that's A and B. Yeah. Now remember what we're doing here, objective. Objective is from FG to where? To AB, right? To AB here. So we're almost there. So basically we got our AB already, right? You see? AB here, right? So we need to change our symbol slightly here, okay? Just to match what we uh, really want, okay? Yeah. So in short, uh, this is x of tk plus 1 equal to x tk plus b u tk okay. tk yeah. tk is a time instant and tk plus 1 is also time instant right so considering a time instant then your tk if i relate this tk 
with your sampling time, so I can call that the tk is kt. Right? If you start from zero, your tk is kt, right? Yeah. And your tk plus one is basically k plus one by t. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So then this expression in here will become x k plus one t equal a x okay. Uh, x what x of k t plus b u k t okay u k t <laughs> that's it that's the discretized model here right that's the discretized model and uh, if you don't like the t actually you don't have to keep all the t here because that's just gonna this is gonna be just a sequence right it's gonna be a sequence set here so you can get rid of the t to simplify the writing right here okay? so the t could be deleted. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the only thing that we need to deal with now is so a e equal to e to the power f t. That's 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 the simplest format you could have. Okay. So we'll 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 look at how do we uh, obtain the value of this. Uh, but this guy here okay, needs a little bit uh, tweaking in here. Okay. Needs a little bit tweaking. So let's take a look at the B at here. So what you can do is uh, you can use the so-called substitution technique. So let's say for the B, okay, so what we do is we're gonna let okay, let lambda equal to TK plus one minus tau. Okay. Introduce this intermediate one lambda equal to this. Okay. So if lambda equal to this, what is tau then? How is lambda no no t lambda is what? Yeah, minus lambda, right? Minus lambda. Okay. So what about the d tau now? Negative d lambda. Okay. And what is the lambda? What is the tau's limit? The tau limit is goes from tk to where? Tk plus one, right? That's tau's limit. And what is the lambda's limit then? So lambda is tk minus tau. So when t when t when tau equal to tk, you plug it here. The lambda's lower limit is t. Upper limit is zero, right? So capital T to zero. Okay. So now the the original integral, this original integral can be replaced with the very new variable lambda now, right? New variable lambda. So what do we have? The, the B is capital T to zero, and the E uh, here E to the power of f uh, lambda, right? Lambda. And d tau, d tau is a negative lambda, and multiplied by g. Okay, so that basically much cleaner. Okay. Integral t to zero. If you change that to zero for t, you get negative, right? So negative and negative cancel each other. So we end up with a zero to t, okay, like this. So that's the b, right? This is much simpler uh, things that, that we want to deal with. There's no k or k plus ones, okay? Yeah. And the a is let's rewrite it. F t. Okay. So if you observe these two here, okay, uh, those are not the final things we could use yet, but uh, uh, basically this is the formula that we're going to use to derive a and b. But if you look at a and b here, they both contain what? They both contain a e to the power of f something. E to the power of f something here, right? Yeah. So what? It, uh, what? What? Uh, uh, what 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 uh, what it means is it, it looks like we have to obtain an expression, an expression like a e to the power. If I can obtain a power, uh, an expression e to the power of f of t, and then I can replace this t with a capital T, I got this, right? If I obtain this guy here, I can replace the t with the lambda, and then I got this, and then I can integrate to get the b. That makes sense, right? So basically, this is the key portion. So we probably need to obtain. A e to the power of f t first, 
and which is what we call what the transition matrix, right? Transition matrix. Okay. Yeah. So now let's uh, let me show you how do you how do we obtain this e to the power of t here. But it doesn't matter how, in the next few steps, I think you you, you got to be satisfying with the result is we are, we, ha we have uh, successfully achieved our objective to change this continuous one to the discrete model here. Okay? Yeah. Okay. So now the next thing here is let's obtain this guy here. Okay, let's obtain this. Okay, so to obtain this guy here, we have to go back to our original continuous okay, state space model. Okay, so let's come back to this guy here. Yeah. So what's the solution in this for this one again? It's what? x of t equal to e f t okay x of this is t naught here right maybe I'll put a zero here let t naught equal to zero okay let the initial time zero so this is x of zero and zero to t e f t minus tau u tau and g right that's the solution of this one here Okay, solution. Yeah. Now, if I do a slightly different way here, okay? So looking at this one here, if I take Laplace transform, take Laplace transform on the right and the left side of this equation, okay? The left and the right side of the equation here. What is the lap if, if Laplace if Laplace of x of t okay let's denote that as x of s okay so we don't know what x of t is but let's just say Laplace of that is capital X of s so in this case actually it's a vector okay it's a vector here and what's the Laplace of the derivative? What s capital X of s minus uh, there's no s there, right? X yeah, x of zero. Yeah. Right. Okay. So let's plug in the property into this process taking a plus. And we end up with what? We end up with S capital X of S minus initial condition equal to F X of T plus not X of T. Equal this S right here plus G and U of S. Right, U of S. Okay. Okay, so both sides has x of s right here, and then what's the x of s then? So let's solve for let's solve for x of s. Uh, solve for x of s. So what we can do is we can move this one first to the left temporarily, move the x naught to the other side. So when we move this one to the left here. Okay, when you move it to the left and take out the common factor capital X of S, okay, take out the common factor X of S. So here's S. Well, see, this is a F here's a matrix, right? There's a matrix here. But S is a scalar quantity. So you cannot just use S minus F right here. So yes, yeah, you have to multiply by a dynamic matrix here first, then minus F. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, so then we're solving for x of s here, right? x of s. So what do we solve for? We basically 
it's like inverse this matrix here. Basically, you can multiply each side by the inverse of this matrix. And uh, when you multiply each side inverse of the matrix, you have Okay, we have this one here. That's it. Okay, so now we're ready to to take a look at uh, the comparison in here. And what's the solution given in here? It's x of t equal to e to the power of f of t equal to um, multiply by x of zero here, right? X of zero. <coughs> and what is the solution? by taking a plus transform here. It's x of s equal to this guy here. And in the end, if you take a inverse Laplace of the both sides here, what do we get? x of t equal to what? Inverse Laplace Okay, plus the rest, right? Plus the rest. Okay. So now I want you to compare it here both of them are solution for x of t. And there is a term x of 0 at here. So naturally, basically, this e to the power of f of t must be what? It must be this. OK? Yeah. So now we have this e to the power of f of t equal to the inverse of plus si minus f inverse of this. There we go. Okay. Yeah, so my, you, you might argue is thinking is, well, what exactly is the purpose of this one here? You're making it uh, simpler or making it more complicated. It, it, well, it's hard to see. Of course, you math lab, it's easier. But this is one analytical way of Manually, you can obtain the solution e to the power of t. Remember, e to the power of the Taylor series are infinite numbers, infinite number things adding together, right? So if you do manual calculation, it's not possible. But now there's alternative thing in here. So the alternative is you find this one first, then you take an inverse of a plus, and you can get this one here. Okay? Yeah. So. Okay. Good. So now I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna uh, give you an example of it here, okay? Yeah. So, any questions? No good? Yeah? Okay. Did I lose anybody here? Most of them? <laughs> uh, there's, there's, those are basically fundamental calculus, okay? So, let's take an example. We'll start from beginning. Let's see. I have a continuous system. I have a plant it here. Uh, the plant has a, a trans function. Okay. Very typical, uh, very typical plant trans function for a DC motor. Okay. Yeah. And. Uh, the the project for the undergrad student the the system if for mechanical student you have done uh, the modeling and uh, that should jog your mind when you deal with that kind of a, a motor system and uh, you can if you're just simply looking at the position and velocity between the input and output uh, the voltage and the position and velocity it's going to be a first order system here yeah and the second order basically it's the first order between the the voltage and the velocity and uh, then you t the, then you take an integral, then you get a position here, right? So it becomes a second order. So one over s is basically an integral. Okay. So integrating of velocity, you get this so, uh, position. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So what I, what I want is I want to obtain the zero order hold equivalence, right? A discrete state space model. Okay. Okay, state spin model. If uh, if we never 
we haven't covered this class here, then what would you do is you probably you're gonna uh, where, where, yeah if I if I haven't taught this class here, what where, 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 what could you do to obtain a dis discrete Swiss model? So what do you do? You have to basically because it's a zero hood, right? So you have to z z. You have to do this first, right? Do this first. And then you obtain, let's say, uh, in this case, we call it h of z here, maybe. Okay? Then you obtain uh, a z trans function. From the z trans function for previous lecture, uh, you can use that uh, standard template for control canonical or observable canonical and uh, get a state space model, right? Okay? Yeah. Okay, so now going through the, the process that we learned today, so what we do is we have to obtain a continuous state space model first. All right? So, yeah. Right. What is the type of order of the Z squared? Z squared? Square. Oh, S squared. Yes, there, there should be S squared. Remember what I said at the beginning here. If this is a plant, when you take this, divided by S. Remember that, right? That's that's sort of a, a results that you uh, formula yeah, you gotta basically make use sometimes. Okay, so if I do this uh, process here, I have to obtain first continuous space model. Uh, to obtain continuous space model, you can you actually if you learn modern control, um, you you can actually directly get a state space model out of this trans function just like the Z trans function. You know, Z-trans function, we have a template, right? We have a template, basically, uh, the, the control canonical or observable canonical. Okay? There, there's actually no difference in terms of the template. You just replace the Z with the S, it's the same thing. You can still use the template, okay? You use the same template. But I don't want you to do that at this stage here. I want you to do the next thing here, okay? Not use the template. So what you do is, you look at this trans function here convert this trans function back into ordinary differential equation. So what do we have? We have y. When we convert this one back to the differential equation, okay, this is 1 over s squared plus 2s. s in Laplace, just s represents what? 1 over s represents integral. So s represents derivative. So s squared represents double derivative. So Okay, plus two, yeah, okay, equal q of t. Okay. So you don't need to any additional step when you see a trans function, that's what you can write here. Now we're gonna uh, derive ourselves our state space model from here, okay, yeah. Uh, remember the uh, the system here. It, this is more of like a, the uh, the DC motor servo system. So y of t will represent the output, which is the position, and y dot, which will be representing the velocity. Right? Yeah. So let's define ourselves a certain state variable, and I'm gonna define my x1 the state variable as the position. Okay, as a position. And then I'm going to define my x2 state as the okay, uh, velocity. Okay, velocity here. Uh, second order system, so we only need two states here. Okay, we only need two states. So then, based on the two state variable here, and then basically what's x1 dot? x1 dot is y dot, which is basically x2 of t, right? So I'll write x2 of t here. Is that good? Hmm? Yeah. Then x2 dot, it's y double dot. And what's y double dot? y double dot is negative 2y dot plus u of t, right? Plus u of t. That's the original differential equation. And what is what is the y dot here? Y dot is what? X2 of t, right? Exactly. So 
basically is negative 2 x2 of t plus u of t. Okay, so now you have your state equation here, right? Your state equation. Okay, so in short, in matrix, the matrix uh, format and that give us what's the matrix here. Okay. So here's the state equation. Set of the equations here. I write it into state space, uh, matrix format. So here the coefficient for x2 if for, for the two state is 0 and 1, right? And here the coefficient is 0 and negative 2. And here the coefficient is 0 and 1. Okay. So that's the state equation. Yeah. How do you choose your state variables uh, without uh, simulation there? Yeah, that's that's a good question. So I didn't draw the simulation diagram here, right? So I I uh, uh, the way I choose the state variable here is I I'm kind of choosing the state variable but based on the observation, based on the uh, based on the understanding of the system. So well, I'm telling you this is a motor. I'm telling you this this position, this is velocity. But if I just give you the mathematical equation here. What exactly does it represent? We don't know, right? Yeah, so they can represent anything physically. Okay? Yeah. But if you know that the physical meaning, this is a position, this is a velocity. So this is one way of getting the state space model. And remember, there are infinite number of ways of getting state model. Okay, you can get a control canonical, you can get an observable canonical, you can get a Jordan, you can get, you know, they're diagonalized to form. And uh, you can get uh, state space model that doesn't have even have any meanings regarding the state variable. Basically, they're infinite solution, but this is one solution. What's good about this is you know exactly what the state variable here represents. Okay. So in the previous, uh, uh, in the last year, uh, the student was doing some simulations. So they 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 obtain basically uh, what they what what he did is here's my uh, system here, right? He punch in the numerator, denominator, and give it to the math lab. So math lab generates state space model, and then start to do the simulation. Okay. But then uh, he, he he came to me saying uh, the the response of this state variable is not the same as yours. And why is that? The reason is because when you use a math lab to generate a state space model, that state variable not necessarily represent as a position or velocity. Okay? So that's basically a little thing you need to be sure of. But if I generate my state space model, not using MATLAB, but using my hand calculation like this simple process here, and I know exactly this represents position, that represents is velocity. Okay? After discretization, next step, and my x1 of k and x2 of k still represent is the position and the velocity. Okay. Yeah. So that's basically one advantage of of this one here. Was that okay? Yeah. And what about this output here? Okay. Output is just x one of t. So so one zero x one of t x two of t. Okay. So now we have this matrix. This matrix, according to our notation today. This is F, this is G here, right? This is F, this is G. Okay. So we're going to, what we're going to do next, so we're going to uh, discretize this guy. So what do we do to discretize? The A is e to the power of F capital T. And the B is 0 to T e F lambda d lambda multiplied by G. But uh, what we do is we try to obtain this first. Okay, try to obtain this guy. Once we get this, we're going to replace the small t with capital T, okay, and replace the small t with lambda to the integrals. Okay, so what's this e to the power of f t? It's 
it's it's the inverse Laplace and SI minus F inverse of this. Right? Yeah. Okay, so now let's take a look at uh, single out this thing here. What is SI minus F inverse? Okay, let's think all this. Here. So SI minus inverse, I guess we need SI minus F first. F is this, right? F is this. SI, and by the way, what's SI? Right? this huh? yeah so plugging this matrix minus the F what do we get S that here negative 1 here 0 here and then what plus 2 here right negative inverse So this is a two by two matrix inverse. Yeah. And uh, do you remember how do you get the two by two matrix inverse? So first it's one over You have to uh, just just uh, bear in mind. I think it, I think that okay, you flip this position D and A, okay, and then put a negative sign at it here. Yeah. Okay. So it's not bad actually, just symbolically. Okay, so what do we get? So this is S, AD is S by this, right? S by this, minus this, but that's a zero, so that's just one over S, S plus two right here. Okay. So flip the position, here's S plus two, here's S, one now, and zero here. Okay. Okay, so multiply this one into this matrix, and okay, multiply this into the matrix, we end up with, so when you multiply into the matrix, this is one over S at here. This is one over S, S plus two at here. And zero here, one over S plus two at here. Is that clear? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, so now the next step is to take the inverse Laplace of this matrix, right? This matrix. So inverse Laplace of the matrix meaning inverse Laplace of each one of the term and here. Okay, each one of the term. Okay. So then uh, e to the power of f of t okay, is the inverse Laplace of each one of them. <coughs> So you have your z table, but actually your z table has a column of a s function, right? And there's another column of a t function. So you have a shortened uh, uh, Laplace table there. Okay. Yeah. So what is the inverse Laplace of one over s? Huh? What was it? Anybody? Unit step. Unit step, exactly. Unit step. Okay, so <laughs> you, you know when you when you learn control system, um, I, I think there's a couple of things that should be printed in your brain here. Yeah, this is one thing, right? What's the what's the inverse law plus one? And what's the inverse law plus of one over s plus two? Yeah. And what about the inverse Laplace this way? Okay, that's not a good hard to see. But what would you do first? Exactly, yeah. So I do a partial fraction expansion. I think I will get I'll get this. Okay, one over s minus one over two, one over s plus two. Okay. 
Uh, sorry, I'm, I shouldn't put it here. Yeah. Yeah. So, huh? yeah. So then, this is a u of t minus one over two e negative two t. Yeah. Okay. Uh, technically speaking, you can replace the u of t with one, right? So, so as long as you know you're dealing with so causal, basically t start from zero. If t always start from zero, then you can replace this with one. Okay. Yeah. See, so that's it. That's that's our e to the power of f t. And then uh, I I need this e to the power of f capital t. So you just replace the t with capital T here, right? Yeah. So the A matrix is E F capital T. So that's one at here. And one minus one half E negative two capital T zero here, E negative two capital T. Okay. Oh, actually sorry, I think I missed the negative here. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's your A here. If you have the capital, if you have the sampling time plug in, you then you will be able to calculate the number here, right? So let's take a look at B there. Okay, the B. So what do we need to be the B? B need to integrate integrate this this thing here. Integrate. Okay. So integrating zero to T at here, and what are we integrating? We're integrating. I replace the t with the lambda. Replace the t with lambda. D lambda. Multiply by g. And g is 1, 0. Okay, g is 1, 0. Okay. So you've got two choices. You either integrate this uh, matrix by element by element first then multiply by this vector here or actually there's one simple way is just multiply the vector first right and then you do the integral okay so that'll simply cut down a few um, computations there so this by that is one. Oh, it's all one oh, so is it, wait a second here yes yeah, so this is zero one right Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. I'm, I mean, this is a C matrix. This is a G matrix here, right? Yeah, I'm thinking here. Yeah, it's a zero one here. Yeah. So that does give us a few computations. Okay. Okay, so now there's something integral about exponential function got involved. Okay, from my past experience of teaching you guys, there's here, you know, what what is what is this guy here? Is that it? What should I should I multiply? All right? Yeah. So the derivative of this gives you this, okay? So when you plug in 0 to t here, so 1 half plus 1. Plus one. Uh, yeah. uh, well, no. 1 half, right? <laughs> okay. And you can try the other one, okay? Yeah. Okay, so. This is basically how you get A, B, right? Basically, once you plug in, now you get your discretized system matrix A and B. Okay. Uh, I'll skip this. Let's say if you if you substitute t equal to one into the above equation, then you get uh, all kind of numbers there. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Excellent. So there's a little bit one more thing, and I'll run out of time here. Uh, basically, the idea is this. 
going back to the discrete model Ooh, a lot of yeah let's say you if you have your discrete state space equation here right discrete space equation and then the question here is what is the corresponding z pulse transfer function so how do we end up with that right so essentially the diagram I showed you, there are two branches, right? There are two branches. One branch is from Z trans function to the state model, from continuous to discrete model. But either way, you know, they all describing the same thing, right? Describing the same thing. So if you want to convert this back to Z trans function, and they should be the same, basically, right? Yeah. So the next lecture will just to uh, show you one formula for that information. Okay? Yeah. Any question? Oh, good. Yeah. Assignments, uh, as I said, I'm not going to mark it, but I need, do need you to submit it to me. I'll, I'll just sort of take a roughly look at uh, uh, what you did, you know, and who gave it to me, more importantly, <laughs> before the due date. So I'll uh, just submit it. Uh, if you can give it to me to my office, it'll be great, because I don't have the keys to the Dropbox yet. Uh, but uh, if, uh, the, the, I know the due date is 4 p.m., right? So if I'm not there, you can <laughs> slide on the door. Otherwise, if you really can find me, just drop it out in the box, and later I'll try to get it. Okay. Yeah. So two days today. Um, once I had a look at this, maybe sometime next Thursday, oh sorry, uh, Wednesday, and I'll give it back to you guys. I'll post a solution, and you mark it based on the solution. Basically, you go over the solution, you mark it, okay, and you tell me how much you get. And I'll just record. It. <laughs> yeah. So if I remember, Chris uh, didn't do the <laughs> last two questions, but he said in 100%. And I'll go back to him. <laughs>